ray optics see first you should know the properties of light light always travels in a straight line when light strikes on any surface it may reflect or it may refract or it will diffract see reflection means suppose if it's a surface xy it separates two medium let be rarer and let be denser medium when light strikes on the surface i'll just draw a normal ray that is a ray which is perpendicular to the point of incidence this ray it bounces back into the same medium now reflection means a bouncing back of light into the same medium and here angle of incidence the angle formed between this incident ray and the normal ray an angle of reflection it's an angle between reflected ray and normal ray always angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and at the point of incidence point of incidence this incident ray reflected ray and normal ray are all lying in the same plane so these two are the two laws of reflection so angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection and at the point of incidence all these three rays incident ray reflected ray and normal ray are lying in the same plane suppose if light ray if it refracts if i say it's a rarer i it's a denser medium light it will change its path it's because of density of the medium when light travel from rarer to denser medium it always bends towards the normal best example if i say it's a air medium i let be a water medium or any gloss medium when light travels from a rarer to denser medium this light ray it changes its path it deviates towards the normal when it travel from denser to rarer medium it bends away from the normal so this one is angle of incidence angle between incident ray and the normal ray angle between refracted ray and normal ray is angle of refraction at this point of incidence all these three rays incident ray refracted ray and normal ray are lying in the same plane and according to snell's law snell's law the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always constant that constant is refractive index of the medium so refractive index means suppose if i say refractive index of water is 1.33 it means when light travel from air to water the speed of light it changes by 1.33 times the speed of light in air medium if i say refractive index of gloss is 1.5 the speed of light decreases by 1.5 times when it moves from air to gloss medium so there are so many different types of refractive index one is absolute refractive index and the other one is relative refractive index absolute refractive index
so when light travels from air to some other medium if I know the speed of light in air medium let be C it's a constant value that's 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second When it will enter into the some other medium, the speed changes, let it be V. V is the speed of light in that particular medium. Absolute refractive index means the ratio of speed of light in air to the speed of light in a given medium. So I can find the refractive index of given medium with the help of the ratio of speed of light with respect to the air medium. If it is relative refractive index, if I don't know the speed of light in a medium, and if I give water and glass, suppose if it is a water, now light is traveling from water to glass, you know it's a rare medium, it's a denser medium, light it bends towards the normal. If I would like to find the refractive index of this gloss. That's refractive index of gloss with respect to water is equal to the speed of light in water by speed of light in gloss. So if I have two different medium like water and gloss, I can find the refractive index of the second medium with respect to water. That's refractive index of gloss with respect to water is the ratio of speed of light in water by speed of light in gloss. I can also find the refractive index of water with respect to gloss. If light it travels from gloss to water then I can find the refractive index of water with gloss that is Vg by Vwo where Vg is the speed of light in gloss and Vw is the speed of light in water. So absolute refractive index is a ratio of speed of light in air to the speed of light in given medium and relative refractive index is a ratio of speed of light in two different mediums. The one more important property of light is interference. Interference, suppose if I consider two waves, let be a first wave, I can see I1 is the intensity of this wave. Intensity means the number of light rays passing through a given space or given area in any time. And I'll consider one more wave. Let I2 be the intensity of second wave. When these two waves superimpose on each other, then there'll be change in the intensity of the resultant wave. It may be more or less. It depends on whether the two waves they interfere constructively or they interfere destructively. If they interfere constructively, the intensity increases. If they interfere destructively, the intensity will be less. So interference means there will be change in intensity of the resultant wave when two or more waves superimpose on each other. And this property is nothing but interference. Now, we will discuss how the resultant wave will have maximum intensity and minimum intensity. If I consider the first wave where A is amplitude of the first wave and I will consider one more wave where B is amplitude of the second wave. The displacement of the first wave 
that is y1 you know it is a sine omega t you already studied this concept in 11th standard where a is the amplitude of this first wave and omega it's an angle of frequency and t is the time similarly y2 with the displacement of the second wave that is b sine of omega t plus phi this phi is the phase difference between these two waves phase difference means it's a state of vibration suppose if I say these two waves they're in same phase means at the same time the maxima and minima they will coincide at the same time there will be a same maxima and minima for both the waves and I can say both the waves are in phase if there exists some phase difference let it be fine when these two waves superimpose on each other the displacement of the resultant wave that is y is equals to y1 plus y2 so I can substitute both the values to find the displacement of the resultant wave that's y is equals to a sine omega t plus b into the sine of a plus b formula so sine a cos b plus b into that cos a sine b see here from these two terms sine omega t is common so y is equal to a plus b cos phi into the sine omega t plus b cos omega t into sine phi but if these two waves superimposed on each other this is a resultant wave let r be the amplitude of the resultant wave I don't know whether it is maximum or minimum that y is equals to r sine of omega t plus theta where r is the amplitude of the resultant wave and theta is the phase difference between this resultant wave and any one of these two waves if I compare these two equations I'll get the equation for r see y is equal to r sine omega t cos theta I'll just expand this term sine of a plus b plus or cos omega t into sine theta if I compare these two equations I'll get r is a plus b cos phi this r cos theta is a plus b cos phi and here r sine theta is b sine phi I can compare these two equations so if I compare these two equations I'll get a plus b cos phi which is equal to r cos theta and b sin phi is equals to r sin theta If I square and add these two equations, R square is equal to A square plus B square plus 2AB cos phi. I'll get the equation for the resultant wave that R is equal to square root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos phi. means if phase difference that is phi if it's an even multiple even multiples of pi if phase difference is even multiples of pi then r is maximum 
I'll get the maximum amplitude of the resultant wave when this phase difference is even multiples of pi. Means, suppose if I substitute this n is equals to 1. If n is 1, here it will be cos 2 pi, cos 2 pi value. So cos 2 pi is nothing but cos 360 degrees. This whole thing will be cos 360 is 1. I'll get R is equals to A plus B. R is equals to square root of A square plus B square plus 2AB into 1. So you'll get R is equals to A plus B. Amplitude of the resultant wave is maximum when the phase difference between the two waves is even multiples of pi. It means if n is equals to 1, I'll get A plus B. If n is 2, again I'll get A plus B. So phi should be even multiples of pi. Similarly, I'll get the destructive interference when this R is equals to A minus B. It is possible only when this phi, it should be odd multiples of pi. If I substitute n is equals to 0, this phi is equals to pi, cos pi is 180 degrees, cos 180 is minus 1. If cos 180 is minus 1, I'll get R is equals to A minus B. So constructive interference, if phi is even multiples of pi, means bright band, I'll get dark band on the screen after superimposition of two waves when this phi is odd multiples of pi.